My guest is an extraordinary Miamian, Dr. Jacques Fresco. Does it bug you that uh, people, when they talk about Jacques Fresco in Miami, say that he's someone who's too far ahead of his time? His thinking is, we're not ready for advanced kind of thinking. Not that type. Does it bug you? I imagine every creative person in every field encounters that sort of problem. No, it doesn't. I can't afford it. There's too many things that are important. You're very science and technological oriented. You want the uh, categories and people, I remember classifying categories and certain people living here. And I never wanted that. No. Let's say that we, we didn't read each other or I did not communicate the ideas. Uh, in essence, to me, all of the marvels of science and technology, all of the electronics and mechanical wonders are just so many millions of tons of junk unless it enhances the lives of men. The reason we emphasize machines and technology is to free men to go to art centers, music centers, cultural centers, and to find the meaning of their own existence and lives. How many people do you know of today sitting at home and playing their photograph and radio and TV have any idea of how this works? You know, it's just happening around them, and, and they're falling behind. What is happening to man is that his technological society the newer value systems that dominate our times that are pressing onward are just leaving behind hundreds of thousands of people that cannot make the transition. In other words, people that can't change can be found in the Amazon jungle today, the headhunters. And we've got to change. Are you rolling? Yeah. What's this, the 27th? Yeah. Larry, look. Okay, 27th, 2011. Relativity, did you want to? Yeah, are you ready? Sure. Ready. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about relativity. Um, relativity, they call it the theory of relativity, and I believe Albert Einstein put forth concepts related to it. I don't think it's a theory. I think they ought not to call it a theory of relativity. I think that the theory of evolution is another word with theory. It seems that when anthropologists dig into the back history of civilization and they find embedded in rocks prehistoric remains of trees and other things, they all changed. The palm trees of a million years ago were different than the palm trees today. So evolution means that things change. Whether they evolve or not, from the lower animals, just how they do that is not understood. So you can say, well, we don't understand exactly how it works, but things do change. So the, like I said, the trees of three million years ago are not like the trees of today because the climate was different. So when people say, I don't believe in evolution, there's evidence to show that things change. Even palm trees or any kind of plant undergo change. So you can say, hey, here's a concept of change. But uh, a theory means uh, somebody's idea about something that may or may not be. We find that all things change including children, as they're growing up, they change. Automobiles change. Uh, production methods change. Civilization undergoes change. So I want to say this. My first real exposure to relativity was in California many, many years ago when I went to visit Palomar Telescope. Now, the Palomar Telescope is a big building that rotates with a telescope aimed at any star. The whole top rotates, the whole dome, not the floor. They rotate that because the opening of the telescope sticking out has to be turned. And they demonstrated relativity there. They pressed a button and the thing started to turn. Since that whole thing was turning, you thought the platform was turning that you were standing on because more motion was in the big thing, so we assumed the platform we're standing on is turning. 
And he says, that's a good demonstration of relativity. So the astronomer who was in charge of that. And it helped. Then, when you apply relativity into human systems, if you're used to France, you're brought up in France, everybody has a glass of wine. If you come to this country, everything seems strange to you because the customs are different. And relative to your background, you think, well, maybe that's the right way and the other way is the wrong way. You go to other countries and you see different customs, you say, give me the good old USA. And when they come to this country, you say, give me good old Alaska. You know what I mean? Because they're brought up with a different concept. Now, if you could look at a dog, if a dog looks at a giraffe, or if a, do- or if a mouse looks at a dog, he says it's enormous if a mouse could talk. And when a giraffe looks at a dog, he says it's very little. They're both telling the truth relative to their position of observation. Is that clear? That's why the word truth is very shaky. And uh, we used to say the lion is the king of beasts. But really the virus kills lions and whales and people, so maybe the virus is the king of beasts. We talk of things as though they were true. And that's why Semantis has introduced terminology like it seems to me, which is very good, it seems to me that a dog would appear small to a giraffe. That's the truth. If a giraffe could talk. Now, if you can put, which I did years ago, I put a prism in front of a dog and then another prism at the near the feet of the dog so the dog gets a ground view of other animals. In other words, the vision comes from low. And when I put a dog the same size as the dog, it looked enormous because he's getting a good ground view and he backed away. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is relativity applied. Now, they say that a bear stands up to look larger. He doesn't stand up to look larger. He stands up, period, when he sees a person. But man edits what he sees. He says the reason for the peacock big display of feathers is to attract the opposite sex. The peacock responds a certain way. The opposite sex responds a certain way to that. But it's not there to attract the opposite sex. That's where relativity comes in. People say, we have ears to hear with, tongue to taste with, nose to smell with, and eyes to see with. Now, all that sounds very acceptable to people that are not highly disciplined in language. But if you're highly disciplined in language... You ask a person whether they really believe that. And that's where I said to a guy who was a doctor who said, we have eyes to see with. So I brought him in a dark room and said, see. He says, I can't unless you turn the lights on. Then you don't have eyes to see with. You see if there's light. Some people can see better in the dark, but it doesn't mean absolute dark. If it's absolutely dark, the doors are closed, you can't see. And if you got a, a cold, it's difficult to smell. And if you have punctured eardrums, you can't hear. But hearing helps people survive. If I'm crossing the street talking to somebody, I can hear a Mack truck coming, and I, my head will turn. But if I lose my hearing, I lose my senses in that area. Is that clear? And if I lose my hearing or I'm blind... I can't tell one to cross the street because I can't hear traffic coming. So I'm less equipped. Now, the more you know about relativity, you can understand when a person says, I'm a Greek, I love Greek music, I can't stand American music. He's talking about his environment. But the guy says, the Greek music is truly beautiful. That's because he's been heavily indoctrinated in Greek music. But what he thinks he's talking about is the truth. He doesn't know that, you know, all the Greeks he know, they hold hands on shoulders and dance in circles. And when the Greeks feel good, they hold shoulders and they dance in circles. And he says, that is a 
different kind of people, they have a different feeling, they are better people, they have a deeper feeling. He's talking about his own land, that's where relativity comes in. Behavior and values are relative. Now, when I say the artist, the painter, the artist, musician, is more inclined to accept metaphysics than the physicist. Do you know why? Why is an artist more inclined to accept metaphysics? Lack of training in science. Yes, lack of training in science. Do you have any other concepts? They they have they have no platform. They have, anything goes, which I guess is a lack of training in science. Well, they say they like art. It's and a feeling tone. It's an emotional tone. It's more emotional than it is physical. The artist says, "I just I love to paint." Well. If he was a shoemaker, he'd like to make shoes. And if he's a sculptor, he loves to sculpt. And so they think it's real, like Picasso. They look at his work and say, the man is a genius. Somebody hyped that kind of stuff. And somebody made it popular. When the king is told that he was put here by God to rule over society, he likes that. Makes him feel good. But if you say, look, the king is just another guy that sometimes makes mistakes, sometimes he doesn't, then the public will not respect the king that much. If you say, well, look, sometimes the king does the right thing, sometimes he's wrong, he's a human being with limited information, he can't make absolute decisions. If you did that to the public under that king, the king wouldn't have no authority anymore. So he has authority. When the king makes a statement, everybody listens because he's considered important. But they don't say, I wonder what he what he's saying, if it can be verified. They don't ask those questions. He's the king. He must know what he's talking about. Or if a guy is a senator, he must know about how to manage government. Not necessarily. That's why, why is news managed? Why don't they give you all sides, the Nazi viewpoint, the Spanish viewpoint, and war? Because you can't keep soldiers in line if you gave them the viewpoint of every other country on the news, especially when you're at war. If you say General Thompson made a terrible mistake, he sacrificed 3,000 people on the beach because he didn't know how well armed the enemy was. Well, that general would be arrested. I say, you had no right making a decision unless you had all that information. But they don't put that out on the news because it makes the army look bad. Anything that would make the Pentagon look bad makes people lose confidence in the Pentagon. Do you understand that? And if people lose Pentagon confidence, they don't make appropriations for them. Do you understand that? So people don't deliberately get up and falsify information. They falsify information when it threatens their authority. Is that clear?